I would tell you this, you better be on your guard. And police officers and feds, I don't think feds are ever going to be on your guard because I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. And this Comey and this FBI and the bullshit, excuse my French, the bullshit that he's been putting out and put out for four and a half hours. And, oh, yeah, he did a little better job today than his, you know, two-dollar perp act where he was going his head side to side and looking down and up and and even trying to hold his eyes open so he didn't blink. He must have had him some some assistance today with, you know, some kind of a smoother, you see. And, oh, he appeared oh so wonderful and oh so, oh so la mio, you see. But the fact of the matter is, I'm going to tell you something. If you work for the FBI, you got 35, 36,000 people, whatever, involved in all of that. What your man did today was to set a precedent that, to set the precedent and to double and triple and quadruple down on it. Even though he said, by his own admission, that what Hillary Clinton did violated the statute. He applied a different thing that was never in the statute, which was the, you know, the intent, he says. But that ain't what the statute said. And he acted like the prosecutor of the Justice Department. And he used to be assistant director of it. But the fact is that this guy was appointed by Bush, which I was no fan of Bush either. Anyway, let me go back to this in a minute, because what I'm going to tell you is you're seeing some interesting things from the U.S. NRC, United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. If you never read these, then you should uh, uh, read them from time to time. July 6th, the D.C. Cook Unit 2 reactor was manually tripped in an unusual event, an UN-7, N-7 unanticipated explosion took place and an emergency declaration was made due to steam leak and associated damage in the turbine building. In accordance with the emergency plan procedures, notifications of Berrien County and the state of Michigan were completed. But there was some sort of unanticipated explosion. D.C. Cook plant, Marion County, Michigan. Now, is old uh, Boris and Natasha on the loose? Or is it old Ivan, you see? Or is it the ISIS? And who did Lieutenant General Michael Flynn say, basically running ISIS? Lieutenant General Michael Flynn said that the Obama administration, and who was Flynn? He was the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency up until last summer, a year ago. And he said that the Obama administration recruited, funded, and trained ISIS. And they're still running them. So when you get old Hillary in, you just wait and see. Because this whole Libyan thing and this whole deal with her and the Joker Tut Lizard of the Muslim Spring or the whatever it was, you know, the Middle Eastern Muslim revolts and, inter, you know, all of the uprisings. They created all of it. They fomented it. And the prophecy in the Middle East about a great Western leader, a powerful, whose name means lightning. Well, that's what Barack is. It's lightning, you see. And, oh, incidentally, isn't it cute that O'Reilly trotted out the picture of him and his, and Mufti in his Muslim little outfit when he was a young teenage boy from Indonesia when he was listed as a Muslim student by his stepfather who adopted him. And, of course, his real name is Barry Sotero. He was adopted. He's an Indonesian citizen. And so now we kind of get back to an FBI director appointed by him who, of course, didn't go in and, and really look at anything as far as the birth certificate goes. And the fact that his 
grandmother worked for Social Security Administration and that he had one of his Social Security numbers was the Social Security number of a dead white guy from Connecticut and he's never lived in Connecticut. So, of course, the FBI can't investigate that. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something straight. FBI agents, nobody is ever going to cooperate with your butts ever again. Because your director has set a precedent that basically means that you can do anything you want to do if you're a big shot in D.C. and Washington and get away with it and that there is no more rule of law. Even in today's testimony, he was asked directly, what do you tell, Director Comey? What do you tell somebody back in my district who says, well, now, why should I? Adhere to the rule of law when you're not going to apply the rule of law to Hillary Clinton. The same people is asking, hey, what about ignorance of the law? No defense, right? He brought up the thing, hey, it's a 35 mile an hour speeding zone. I'm going 45, but I never saw the sign. Therefore, therefore, I had no knowledge of it. I wasn't sophisticated in knowing about what the real speed limit was, technically. And then he was asked, couldn't Hillary Clinton, as a president of the United States, start right back up now since there's no penalty for doing what she did, even though all the things he basically admits, and that old Gowdy and all the, you know, Shapitz and all of them, nailed him down. But you see... They nail them down and they let them dangle out there and then they, they, they leave people to draw their own conclusions like that magically is going to change stuff, but it doesn't. She lied under oath to Congress, which they're going to investigate now, but that won't go anywhere either. They probably, because justice, after meeting with Bill Clinton, the Attorney General lynch mob basically put the Clinton emails off the FOIA requests and any requests from like Judicial Watch or anybody that cannot be read for 27 months, over two years. So how can you get the emails and oh, maybe they'll get lost at the State Department now. Maybe the Justice Department computers will go on the fritz. Oh, the fritz, the glitch. Oh, ho, ho. but here we go. FBI can't figure any of this crap out, you see. So you have allegedly the Joker Tut Lizard, Barry Sotero, approached by who? The Russian KGB at the age 16, and the backside information says that when he got elected to, uh, to uh, the presidency, not only did the Muslim king of Saudi Arabia allegedly give him $1 billion that went into a bank account somewhere in the Cayman Islands, but see, FBI can't do that or investigate that. They cannot find out. Used to be in charge of. They ask old uh, Comey today, aren't you in charge of uh, counterterrorism? Well, if you had somebody who's a president who got a billion dollars allegedly from the Saudi Arabians and who's running ISIS with his people and you can't even do that, and then you're running guns with Eric Holder, sanctioned by Congress, Comey, and not only are the guns that went to Chapo Guzman and all those people involved in killing a federal aid border patrol agent, Terry, which then means that everybody who gave the green light on that should be arrested as an accessory before or after the fact, and most certainly in Holder's case, obstruction of justice. So let me ask you another question. When Hillary's attorneys wipe clean the servers of 20 or 30,000 emails such a way that the FBI cannot reconstruct them, isn't that... And oh, incidentally, those attorneys did not have the clearance to read those emails. So that's another deal where Hillary gave the emails to read, and then they 
wipe these servers, and he has the temerity to sit there and say, oh, I don't believe she knew what they were doing, and she's not sophisticated. Bullshit, Comey. You're lying through your teeth. The FBI director is a liar. Hillary Clinton's a liar. Joker Tut's a liar. We know that. He's the lying one, you see. And so now, here we go down. The same FBI. We have John Brennan, the current head of the CIA, allegedly converting to Islam while stationed in Saudi Arabia. Joker Tut Obama's top advisor. Valerie Jarrett is a Muslim who was born in Iran where her parents still live, and we just, with Hillary and Obama, gave them $150 billion. Comey, can you not see this crap? And all of those people working for you, they ain't got no respect for you anymore. And if they do, they're just old brown butt buddies, brown nosing their way to the FBI top. Kalstrom sure didn't like what you did, did he? Kalstrom, former assistant director of the FBI, and you guys would not even be qualified to handle the Russians. Because you know why? Your own Department of Defense is giving the Russians Spetsnaz driver's licenses, Kobe. And they're buying houses in California, Colorado, Texas, in the the Uwari Mountains outside of Bragg, in the Smoky Mountains, where we got people who watch them down there, and your guys can't even watch a ham sandwich, let alone a Secretary of State. You got Hillary's top advisor, is Huma Abedin, is a Muslim whose mother and brother are still involved in the now outlawed Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a time to screw around. This is the time to do and to pay attention to the, what the Lord Jesus has to say in the Bible. Because I'm going to tell you what, the wild weasel is running on this planet. And you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And you got all these people coming in. Now we're starting to get the rapes in the United States. Now we're starting to get the ice is starting to get around and kill. Now we're starting to see. We have a guy from the uh, United Arab Emirates coming in and, and Mufti and all of his uh, turbans and all of his stuff. And he comes into the uh, Fairfield Inn and Suites in Avon, Ohio. And the hotel clerk, he wants to rent a room for a month during the time of the uh, RNC. And he's acting suspiciously and everything. And she tried to help him. She tried to help him, and she couldn't find him any rooms in her hotel chain or any related chains or any others locally because they're already booked up. So then he wouldn't leave, and he was disturbed. And so she quietly asked her family to call 911. Now the cops come, and they are, they put him in put him in irons, and then the cops say, "Well, they apologize to him, and it's." No one from the police department here wanted to disrespect you. It's a very regrettable circumstance that occurred for you. You should not have put in that situation like you were. Well, whatever happened to see something, say something. And this, what, who's this cop's name? What is this cop here? Avon Police Department, right? And then now the Lorraine County Prosecutor's Office in Avon, Ohio, probably will have the lynch mob and the FBI come in, and they were going to talk about filing charges against the former hotel clerk who was scared that this man was acting weird and suspicious, this Muslim, in her lobby, even though she tried to help him. And now that she had her family members call 9-11 to report him, and now the Lorraine County, Ohio prosecutor's office Whoever that prosecutor is, you're a piece of crap, too, just like Comey and the lynch mob. So now they're going to try to arrest the woman who did the whistleblowing. Are we not trying to prevent these attacks, or do we want those in the Obama administration, according to who? Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, former head of the DIA. Do we now want them to take over 
and to blow stuff up? Do we want them to then blow something up in Cleveland for the RNC? Make it really nice and easy if Trump's not there anymore and half the Republicans aren't there anymore. Or if the question, if the question, the admittance question that is now going to be in the hospitals, according to sources in Ohio, in northern Ohio, that one of the new admitting questions is going to be, were you at or attending the, the Republican National Convention in Cleveland? So that sort of brings up the idea that maybe somebody's going to get a sickness or a virus or a bacteria or something's been released. Is it ISIS going to do it? Or are the DHS and NORTHCOM and FEMA paid, uh, you know, Russian Spetsnaz who work for the U.S. government, Comey, going to do it now? You get all these Muslims here. Obama Sharia czar. We do not have Sharia law in the United States. We had, and incidentally, Comey, we don't have a democracy. We have a republic for which it stands. And then not only that, Comey, but what about when you were on the board of HSBC or whatever, the big bank there, the Hang Seng, it's the old Hong Kong Hang Seng Bank, one of the original dope banks, and all that cartel money was going into your bank that you're on the board of directors for, and you got nowhere, and you can't see any of that happening, that you guys were, that you were on that board of directors, you were laundering the money. It's no wonder none of your people are going to trust you now, unless they're all suck butts, brown nosers. We do not owe you any respect or anything or loyalty or obedience anymore.